the calling. Brigitte has shared a lot of uh, our family moments and uh, more personal uh, integration in the church. Our relationships highlights moments, events in the church. Um, and I, I could repeat all of these things and uh, uh, maybe I will <laughs> at some point uh, and uh, r refer to some of it. But what I had on my heart to share this morning with the church is about the calling of the Lord. And you see the verse just next to me here on the screen. A servant of Jesus, the Messiah, called to be an apostle and set apart for God's gospel. And what I want to say is that uh, to Bridget and I, We came, we came here <laughs> I don't know what I have. We came to Hong Kong because of the calling of God. We didn't come for uh, to be tourists. We didn't come because we we wish we would have come. Because in fact, living on the east coast of Canada, we knew nothing of Asia, zero. Uh, we heard a few things about the typhoons and volcanoes of the Philippines. That's about all we knew. We didn't, we didn't know anything because our being on the east coast of Canada, we, we refer more to Europe and to Africa or even to Central America. Yeah. So for us to have come here, it had to be a, a higher calling and a higher pur purpose. When we talk about calling, there are different types of calling. We have uh, the calling of the grace of God, the calling of the gospel, be saved. That happened to us in 1978 from a life of disorder and sin and drugs and messed up life. This week, we or last week, we were talking about, uh, I think it's one of our uh, small meeting this week on Zoom, I think on the Wednesday night group. If it would not have been of the grace of God, the romantic pastor would not exist, and our uh, couple's life would have been a disaster. Actually, uh, Bridget's um, dad had warned her as a teenager not to go out with me. And uh, I knew that he was right because of the life I, that I had before. Out without Jesus, our life would have been a disaster. But because of the grace of God and the calling of the gospel, we were saved and we joined that one church that is our home church to, which, to, the, to the, the church we are going back uh, this church is still our Canadian employer. We have so many friends. Our, our senior pastor will be my former best youth leader, one of the best youth leaders in the group that had a great men of God, and uh, we love them and they love us. It, uh, our, our city has been uh, the church in our town, was one of the pioneer uh, Assemblies of God Church of the French language in Quebec and has produced uh, most evangelists and pastors and missionaries. So we are going back to a good church and a community that will uh, love us and we will we love them. 
The second calling is all of us have received a calling to live a life worthy of the gospel, worthy of the salvation, worthy of the price that has been paid for salvation, worthy of the redemption that we have received. So we have received this call, uh, the training, the discipleship, the, the learning of the word of God, the example of godly pastors that uh, were on my, in my life. I had uh, great pastors in my life, uh, both in Canada and here in Hong Kong. And then the, the third uh, one is the calling or the setting apart for a specific purpose, for ministry or a missionary. That's why I chose this, this text here. So uh, my life here in Hong Kong and Bridget's, I think, is divided into two parts, uh, pre-1997 and uh, after 1997. So from 78 to 1990, we, it was the, the first part of our mission uh, training, and uh, we got into the ministry in uh, 1991. God called me in the ministry. 1989 and 1990, I received the call to go to Hong Amen. Kong. And to ch After I've come to two short mission trips with the Church uh, Joy Fellowship Church from the Bronx, New York, with my good friend, Pastor Byron Brennerman, who was a great godly influence in my life. Bibles, please. Anyway, that's how I, we came in 1990. When I came back with uh, 24 from our church in Quebec, we joined with 13 from New York, and we were 37 on the team walking the streets of Hong Kong with Pastor Byron when he challenged me to move here. And I, you heard my story before. And then all of my words, my answer to him was, are you crazy? I cannot. And then I started the list of I cannot and a list of reasons why it was not possible and why I could not come here. And then suddenly the voice of God came to me and says, Rene, did you hear what your mouth just spoke? Your mouth spoke your faith in me. And then uh, when I realized that all my words were unbelief, I, I repented and I prayed the Lord to show me his will and his ways. And then when we returned to Canada, we talked with my senior pastor at the time, the church, and everybody says, yeah, yeah, you, you were made for that. You, you go for that because already I believe that in the calling, the body of the church should be part of the calling. The body of the church sees it and recognizes and attests it. And it's very, very important for, uh, that, that this will happen. So that's how I was called in 1990, and then in 1991, in November, we moved here with our family. We arrived on the 6th of November, 1991, to Hong Kong with uh, Fan Ling Wai, and it has become our home with the small groups of missionaries who attended Lighthouse, and he invited us. It was a new church, and they said, come with us, and then we came here, and Bridget explained a little bit how we got connected with Lighthouse, and... Uh, she mentioned something, but uh, when we came to Lighthouse, we were here to minister. But when we came to Lighthouse, we were also minister, ministered to. Uh, that's very important for missionaries because we were out of an organization. We were not with an organization that has a, a, a pastoral staff and counseling and the structures. We were on our own here. But Lighthouse, with the ex missionary experience of Pastor Steve and Sister Mary, I don't know how many conversations we've had. And they were interested in what we did, report, yeah. tell their adventures and everything. And then they would speak and give advice and uh, continue. And as we were going through also family difficulties, like a crisis and tensions, and uh, we were away from you know our church back home and all this, uh, they were there to... to um, comfort our hearts and uh, calm our, our emotions and brings and restore hope into our life. And they were very, very important. So uh, praise the Lord. Do I have the clicker? Okay, so that's my title. <laughs> And uh, I added another part of that verse because uh, the first one 
wanted to insist on the uh, that word setting apart that is uh, really really Im important the the setting apart it is god who does who does that um it's like a, a marking of boundaries if you look at the original text it's like uh, god is marking your your boundaries is is making you fit into something very specific and i want to insist on that because all of us have various kind of callings but some will get a calling and i i think that my calling was from birth i, I got a mother that was a uh, very uh, fearless uh, very positive minded and i've been ver never i've never uh, had fear i could uh, travel anywhere uh, come to a, before even when I, before i was christian i could uh, i was hitchhiking across canada sleep under the bridge or come to any cities at any time of day or night and always felt confident i'll find a place i'll find a, a solution I, I've always lived my, my life like this. I'll find a solution. There's something good is going to happen. I think I inherited that, that from uh, from my mother. And uh, the, the setting apart started from young. I've always been adventurous and uh, desired to see. And my mother always attested to that. Uh, she says, you were like that from, from the time you were, you were young. And I always wanted to... Uh, Remember uh, early uh, when I was a young pastor with a youth in Canada, we would have uh, weekends of prayer and fasting. And one time we were really praying for the nations and we had shown uh, movies. I don't know how we got these movies. They were from uh, Office National of Canada, some of the movies of Canada. And uh, they were showing some uh, natural disasters in the Philippines. And like uh, big, big things that happened in the Philippines. And we had prayed and we fasted uh, for the Philippines. <laughs> N not knowing that it was part of a calling much, much later. I never thought I would have been going to the Philippines. In the second verse, it says we receive grace, and it takes a lot of grace. And he says a commission as an apostle, that's that version, but it actually it is like an uh, apostleship, or uh, actually it's been, uh, we have been apostoli. It's like a verb. We have been like a sending of. Uh, you receive the grace, and then you receive the, you need to have this uh, sending of, uh, into uh, your life and that's to us what happened and it was important in my life I didn't want to go around and uh, appoint myself and uh, raise funds and I never did raise funds in any church I wanted my church back home to acknowledge the calling that I had and I, I it was important in my mind I call it the Acts 13 uh, sending off. It was important I would be sent like that. And this is what happened. And uh, that was our sending off <laughs> from our church back home was very important for us because we've always had our church behind us. My senior pastor at the time believed in me. He, 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 he was behind me. Uh, we didn't have a salary when we came here. We came by faith, but the church was taking a monthly love offering for our family. And he told us, whatever comes in, you will receive. Sometimes big, sometimes small. When it was time to go to visit uh, Canada, well, there was money to buy the tickets. And there was something, there was, it, it, they were always there. When I needed the uh, letters for the Canadian government as my employers, the church was there. 
A senior pastor visited us in 1992. He actually was here at the same time as our mothers came. Anyway, that is a memory that I have. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, the church was uh, supportive, and, and that was when we, we came here. And this is uh, what we looked like when we, when we were sent off with our children. That's the age of our children when we came, when we came here. Bridget mentioned we had the uh, two churches. Uh, I, I w I'm always reminded uh, of the French songs. Uh, I have two love. One is my country, one is Paris. It's a French song. Uh, so I have two love. One is my church home and one is my church here. Um, the church I was saved, I was trained, and uh, I had good pastors. And Lighthouse, I continue to grow, to be more equipped. I learned, I learned, and I was called, and I was called to fulfill my calling. And for me, it's been important. I was aware of that. I was aware that I was an ambassador of Christ. When Many times I travel alone. I travel with team. I knew I was representing Christ, but I was also, I don't know why I had this in mind, I was representing my country, I was a Canadian, uh, I was a representative of the church, of Lighthouse, so I, I, I always wanted to be very careful in how I presented myself, And but it was important, I was always focusing on fulfilling my uh, calling. And one of the first things that was important to me and a big part of my life Pre-1997 has been the language learning. Le learning Chinese for me has been, a, has been part. It was not something separate. It has been part of my calling, of my ministry. Uh, it was important. I realized it very early. My I enjoyed it. It was not difficult for me. It was a, a, a pleasure. It was a discovery. It was exciting. Uh, many of my friends made big promise they were going to learn Chinese, but they all, all abandoned, but I never did abandon learning Chinese. Even today, I'm still, I'm still amazed how God has blessed me with the, the language, and I still remember so, so much, even though I'm using it much less uh, right now. So I fulfill my calling. Uh, 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 sometimes this calling brought some tensions or misunderstanding because after 1997, when I became a pastor here in Lighthouse with Pastor Jennifer, it's like it was important that I was going to continue my original uh, reason for coming, which was all the relationship with the African yeah, students. To me, it was very, very important, and I... I always uh, and, and, uh, look at myself and interrogated myself. Uh, is that true? Is that what I'm doing? But actually, the answer was I'm fulfilling what I have been called. I haven't changed. I'm continuing what I believe is the call of God. I've been always uh, honestly and w with uh, all my intention and my focus was to fulfill my uh, calling. I've always receive from the Lord uh, this facility to adapt anywhere on uh, any sorts of bed and any conditions on, on, on the train. I slept with the cows. I slept with rats on my head. I slept in winters with the snow, uh, with no windows. I, I, I had the diarrhea and on the farm and uh, I went to the toilet and all sorts of the circumstances. I adapted to everything that I, I, I was uh, facing uh, and, and any things. And one of the things that always have uh, uh, amazed me is the, uh, the grace of God to be accepted and to be loved everywhere that I went. And uh, I don't know, how, this is a miracle to me, uh, every, uh, these aspects of uh, relationship everywhere that the Lord uh, has brought me. Many things that I have that I have learned. I have learned to depend uh, upon the grace of God. I have become a servant of the gospel according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the 
inner working or the energy or the, the working of his power. Uh, it's actually a verse that I'm very interested in that because you will find in this verse the two New Testament Greek words for power of Holy Spirit. The working is the energia, the inner working, the invisible power, the sanctifying, the training, the transforming power and the life of the preacher or the ministers. And then you have the working of his power, the dunamis power, the equipping with, with supernatural force, the ability to, to go on and preach. And I, I remember having preached to uh, lepers and, and hugging a lady that was lep uh, a leper and she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I would go. Well, when Pastor Steve um, invited me for a lunch in 1997, and uh, surprised me with Sister Mary, and they asked me to join with Pastor Jennifer to be pastor of Lighthouse. Wow, that cannot be, you know, because uh, at the time, well, you, you still hear my French accent, and uh, many times I invent new words that do not exist in the English dictionary, uh, but uh, I felt so inadequate I just couldn't believe that they would ask me to, 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 if I become a pastor in Lighthouse, that means I have to speak regularly. Uh, sometimes they ask me to speak one time, two times, because they were the, the Bible teacher of the church. But to, to realize that with Pastor Jennifer, we would be sharing the teaching, I felt totally inadequate. Never, never a single time it came through my mind the thought of being a pastor in Hong Kong. So now it was like a, a new thing to consider. And then they said, no, no, your English is OK. People uh, understand when you speak and you have the anointing. This is the most important. And I said, yeah, but you know, it's a different things. that They have to listen to me all the time with my French accent. But anyway, the church prayed, we prayed, and then we, we started to work together with Pastor Jennifer in 1997 and again it, it was the grace of god it was the grace of god and one of the things that in the grace of god to me was i've learned these things in the ministry is when there's a challenge there's always like i i want to find a solution i want to be part of bringing this project further i, I want to see how we can go to the next step and uh, anyway, that's a long story because there's a lot of details, but uh, I'm the only foreigners and the first one who created a Uyghur uh, Christian website that is used all over the world among the community. And in 2010, I have redone the website in a more modern uh, coding with uh, the help of Ben Tillman, and we created a second website of Bible resources and, uh, and Uyghur, uh, w something, a lot of things that people do not know here in Lighthouse, uh, but uh, you remember uh, Jim Wood and his wife, Linda? Uh, we work a lot to uh, develop some uh, audio uh, Bible study, gospel, like to, to reach and to teach, uh, to make it into the, the hands, because at, at first there was no CDs or DVDs. There was only VHS tape. Then CDs came, then the MP3s, CDs, and then from uh, MP3 CDs to MP3 uh, players. Good. My first mission trip to the Philippines, ex outside of the Tagaytay Conference, uh, but the first one when I went really to, to visit uh, Pastor Mayette in 1999, uh, I w we, we traveled to her place and we baptized 25 of the youngest uh, members of the church there. It was such a great, and I get to know all of the young people that Pastor Amayet had started to teach from childhood into uh, primary school and secondary school that are now the, the, the leaders of the church in Albay and in Laguna. It is a wonderful uh, experience and the privilege to uh, counsel and uh, do premarital counseling and marriage also. 2008, the first medical mission. Wow, that is like, how do you do a medical mission when you have 
no medical training, no nothing uh, that you know how to do or uh, don't know anything about anything. And again, it is like the, the grace of God and the provisions of the power of God. Uh, Pastor Amor uh, at the time became my, my main advisor because in their church, they were doing a mini uh, medical mission monthly in the church with the help of a Christian who was the head of a private hospital there. And I, oh, Pastor Amor, how do you do this? How do you build a, a budget? Uh, how do you decide of the doctors? How do you decide of the medicine and things like that? So then we, we started, and it's become such a important uh, things. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I, 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 I could speak the whole day here, <laughs> and I will not. Praise the Lord. Uh, okay, in closing, one more uh, point here. Uh, I became a servant of the church. As God commissioned me to work for you so that I may complete my ministry of the Word of God. And from the time that we were called into Lighthouse, Lighthouse, as we mentioned, both of us, Bridget and I, was founded on very, very good Bible teachers and good solid foundations. So it had to continue. And with Pastor Jennifer, we, we agree. This is the strength of Lighthouse. That's why people come to Lighthouse. We must focus, and then we started the inductive Bible study training. We did a lot of that so that the people would be grounded in uh, understanding, observing, interpreting, and applying uh, the word of the Lord. The small group Bible studies, the Friday night group at Brother Kim has always been a great, I don't know how many Bible studies and how many books of the Bible they have studied, but the Wednesday night group, uh, as we had the uh, Zoom this week, uh, it's it's amazing uh, all the things we have studied in the Word of God and the importance of our fellowship uh, together. We have studied uh, so so many uh, topics, but another thing that we have learned in Lighthouse here is the the fellowship. At first, we had the fellowship of the missionaries, but in order to fulfill a calling like for me, uh, as I explained the calling uh, here, it, it, you need a body. You need a church family. You, need a, you, you cannot do that uh, alone. And one of my great transformation of understanding ministry when I moved to Asia. In Canada, we come from a very individualistic and competitive church kind of ministry, based ministry. It's like super pastors. They are preaching better than the, the neighbors and the church is bigger. There's a bit of competitions and fear to 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 share together so that they will steal our sheep, you know, things like this. Mm -hmm. And also in Lighthouse, the support, like we often say Lighthouse is a mission church. And it is true because what I have could accomplish in China, in the Philippines, or in other countries in Asia, we went to India and Sri Lanka in 2006 after the tsunami for the first time been to uh, Cambodia more recently, been to uh, Sri Lanka back with uh, Brother Anil, and then we've been to Bangladesh three times. Uh, the wonderful experience of discovering new cultures and the, the way to live. Sometimes it's dangerous, but God is, is there with us. But we need a church body that is okay with that because it may be a conflict between the pastor is traveling somewhere. You're not taking care of us. But when the church has a heart for the mission, they also see the benefit of, of lending your pastor. Or, uh, I, as I said it many times, and I feel it from all of my heart, every single time I have been on a mission trip, short or longer, I'm the one who benefit the most as a pastor. So when I come back, I am renewed, I am refreshed, I have more zeal, I have more desire to serve the Lord. I've been challenged. I've seen a great uh, model of faith around me. I've been challenged. So when you come, it will revive you. So instead of become political and religious over the long time and fall into rot, you always get out of your rot and you, you learn something fresh and learn something new. So I want to thank Lighthouse. I want to thank the, the maturity of the members of Lighthouse for the, the 
understanding that for for pray and one of the highlight i think of lighthouse we must uh, see it is the sisters of lighthouse the 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 wonderful sisters that we have here uh there's no words to to talk about you sisters who are listening today how much you have touched our hearts you really did uh, with your selfless attitude your generosity always inviting us for food sharing um, your your seriousness your commitment toward your employer your example your uh, faithfulness and giving to supporting your family your sacrifices many of you have returned to the philippines and did great ministry and brought blessings uh, to the land of the philippines but you have built an atmosphere of fellowship uh, to add to what lighthouse is known for without our sisters lighthouse would not be uh, what it is and so i want to thank you so much for accepting us having made us uh, felt part of a great family I want to talk pastor jennifer for her friendship through the years melrose my mission partner and the board of lighthouse through the years have always been wonderful to work with we've had our little moment of <laughs> of attention sometimes but basically one thing that i've always been sure of is that everybody that we have worked with in the ministry in lighthouse they love jesus as much as i do and they love lighthouse as much as i do and this has always been my 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 safety my rock and my confidence so i'm going back to canada but you you are my church family and i love you and i want to thank you for having supported my my abruptness sometimes my harsh tones and uh, the the ones that i have offended at times with my words i ask for your forgiveness uh, it was not my intentions it's uh, maybe a bit of my personality uh, but my intention was always to fulfill the calling that the lord has given me and i want to read the scriptures in closing because that's the perfect closing verse i think from the king james especially finally brothers and sisters farewell if it is a farewell service we must at least say farewell and to the scriptures so when i read this text yesterday this is wow and that is also a good good closing because this is a very strong word uh, letters that paul has given to the church with that has many problems and paul's been talking very straightforward to the church and is exhorting with very strong words and then he closed finally brethren farewell but the farewell here actually it's a funny word it's the word rejoice and it's true i'm not making it up it's in the dictionary You'll read any commentary that you want it's rejoice it's like okay fair uh, before i'm closing said don't worry be happy it's just like something like this things will be fine here god is here with you uh, we are going ahead rejoice uh, we are brothers and sisters we have the same hope and everything and then he shares uh, uh, a four part uh, strong exhortation that i think are so filled with wisdom for lighthouse in the time of transition be perfected be of good comfort to one another and another way to read this is like R paul is saying in closing receive my strong exhortations be able to because sometimes pastors or words that would come sometimes must have some corrective elements sometimes rebukes sometimes the the tones may be may be hard but it has to be because we are interacting with 
attitudes and problems and situations. Sometimes it's encouragement. Sometimes it's uplifting and inspiring. Sometimes it, it is a bit, a bit harsh. So receive my exhortation. Be of good comfort or, or comfort one another. It depends on which Bible version you're reading. Be of one mind. Strive to go in the same directions and finding that place to, to agree with one another and do everything to live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. And of course, in Lighthouse, we cannot do it right now. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That is how we were received in Lighthouse at the beginning. Sister Lisa, Brother Joe, and many of the early Christians, when you would walk through the door of Lighthouse Church, you were uh, received with a hug, uh, with a kiss, and uh, we felt that welcome into Lighthouse. So this is a wonderful church, wonderful experience. Thank you so much. God bless you. Farewell. Rejoice. Amen. <laughs>